To follow along with the written version of this pattern and download the interactive PDF, use the link on screen now in the description below or by going to clubcrochet.com slash hummingbird. Hey there, it's Louie, and in this video, we're gonna be crocheting a humming burb. That's right, I said burb with two Bs, and that's because this isn't your average everyday hummingbird. Oh no, this is actually a secret agent disguised as a different kind of bird. What are they spying on? Well, I'm not really sure, but they're definitely up to no good. There's also magnets in the butts so that they can perch on anything metal. This is my newest of my Burb collection, which you can find a lot of on screen right now, and you can find them all at clubcrochet.com slash burb. They're also all available with a Club Crochet membership, but we'll talk about that more at the end of this video. In this video, we're going to be crocheting our hummingbird. Now, a couple of things before we get crocheting. The first is that this pattern I would label easy to medium difficulty. It's not the most beginner friendly pattern out there because we are going to be doing some weird stitches. That being said, I have a feeling that this is going to be a lot of people's first burb tutorial, and it could be some people's first crochet pattern ever. So we're gonna be going extra slow in this video tutorial, going through all the different stitches that you're going to need to know while you crochet this. If I'm going a little too slow for you and you're a little bit more advanced, use the uh, time codes that I put in, in the description of this video and at the bar on the bottom of this video so you can quickly jump around to different parts of this tutorial. I also have full uh, tutorials for different kinds of stitches. If you are a complete beginner and you need a little bit of extra help, check out my Crocheting 101 series. I'll put links to that in the description as well. And we also have a Facebook group and a Discord channel that are great places to ask for extra help if you need it as well as live crochet alongs every single week that you can join in, crochet with me, and ask any questions if you're stuck at any point. For those, make sure to subscribe down below and hit that little bell icon so you don't miss it when we do those live crochet alongs. Again, we do one every single week, so they're really fun to join. Also, please make sure to like this video down below. It helps spread our channel to more crocheters out there and share your crochet work with us. We are at Club dot crochet on Instagram and all of our social media handles are in the description as well. In this tutorial, I am going to be doing it as beginner friendly as possible, but there are some parts of the pattern that you can add to make it a little bit more advanced for uh, more advanced crochets, like adding this belly here and doing some color changes here and there. I will be going through these uh, those parts of the pattern in this tutorial, but I'll also be talking about how to make it even easier if you want to make it super duper beginner friendly. If you're not a complete beginner, I do suggest you check out the written version of these, this tutorial as well. Um, I put links for that in the description, but you can go to clubcrochet.com slash hummingbird to get those tutorials. Also, I have a left-handed version of this video available. You can find links to that in the description. So if you're a lefty, I definitely suggest you check out the left-handed version instead of the right-handed version. And I actually made a Club Crochet left-handed tutorial channel that I uh, made so that if you are a lefty, you can just go there to find all the left-handed tutorials so I don't bombard you with lefty tutorials here on the uh, normal channel. Well, without further ado, let's talk about all the materials that you're going to need to crochet this pattern. For this pattern, you're going to need the following materials. I'm using all worsted weight yarn in 100% cotton. It's my favorite kind of yarn to use for amigurumi, especially a little miniature amigurumi like this. Um, specifically, we're going to be using the colors teal. That's going to be your main color. Your secondary color, uh, we're going to use an off-white. That's going to be for the top of the head of the burb. You'll need a little bit of black for the legs and the beaks. And then you might want a secondary color like this, um, the red for the chest of the hummingbird, if you want to add uh, color changes like that. You'll need a third, uh, a fourth color for that. Um, uh, for a crochet hook, I'm going to be using a size G, four millimeter crochet hook. It's my favorite crochet hook to use for worsted weight yarn. You'll, of course, need a pair of scissors, a darning needle. I suggest using a crimped end darning needle like this. It'll help to get in and out of hard to reach stitches. You'll need a pipe cleaner. That's going to be used for making the beak. Um, you'll actually only need half of a pipe cleaner, but you can use a full pipe cleaner as well. Um, you'll need some safety eyes. I am going to be using a six millimeter safety eyes like this. You'll actually need four safety eyes because you'll need two for the outside of the head, head and two for the inside head. 
Um, if you want to get a bottle of eyes like this, uh, I have them available in the shop. They come with, I think, 50 or 100 eyes in a few different sizes. And it's a great way to support this channel. Um, the last thing that you're going to need is uh, some stuffing and some super strong neodymium magnets. That's what these are. Um, they're extremely strong magnets, and you want to add these to the base of your hummingbird. Obviously, that's optional, but it does allow them to perch on anything metal, which is just really cool. Uh, if you want to get a kit with all the materials that you need to make this pattern, I have them available. Um, you can find links to them in the description, uh, and it's a great way to support this channel. I do monthly crochet kits every single month with all the materials you need to make something uh, from the library. Uh, and this month's club crochet kit was for either a hummingbird or a turkey. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. Check it out. Uh, we'll talk more about that at the end of this video. But if you want to get a crochet kit, it does super duper help this channel. Again, please make sure to like and subscribe and let's get hooking. All right, let's get started. Woo! Okay, so we're going to start by making the wings and you're going to want to use your regular teal yarn for that. Now to get started, we're going to learn how to make the magic loop. Now I have a few different ways that I like to make the magic loop, but this is my absolute favorite way. I think it's just the best. I do have a video tutorial where I teach a few different ways and why one way is better than the other. And I'll link that right here or in the description. But if you are just now making the magic loop for the first time, this is my favorite way to do it. You want to start by holding the yarn down so that it's facing down towards the ground, the tail end facing down. Pinch it with your middle and thumb finger and have it go over your index, under your middle, and then over your index again, but create an X on the front and two parallel lines on the back. So we're holding it like that. Now we want to take this tail end and this end attached to the ball and place it in between our ring and pinky finger and close it in. And that's going to hold it into place like that. So you got your yarn all prepped. Now we're going to take your crochet hook, have the yarn facing back towards you. So the two parallel lines facing towards you. Take your crochet hook and go under the first bar, hook onto the second and pull that second one under the first and then loop it around like that to create a loop. Now going over that first bar, hook onto the second like this and guide it over the crochet hook with your index finger. So now you got the yarn over the hook. Now we're going to do a chain. So we're going to pull this through the loop on the hook. The easiest way to do that is really to just scoop it like that. The scoop really helps and see how my thumb helped pry it through too. That's going to create a little chain and now you can take it off of your fingers and it'll hold this loop into place. We're going to put our first row of stitches into this magic loop. Okay, so for row one of the wings, we're going to single crochet three times into the center of this magic loop. That's going to be pretty easy. Single crochets are going to be the main stitch that we're going to be using for this pattern. I will be using various stitches throughout, but they're all based around the single crochet. To make the single crochet, you're going to take your crochet hook and go into the stitch. In this case, it's going to be right into the center of this magic loop. So you're going to go into the center of the magic loop, and that's going to be called the stitch in this case. And then we're going to yarn over with the end attached to the ball. That's going to be this one. So we're going to yarn over at that, place it onto the hook, and take that hook and go under the stitch, aka in through the loop. Now you'll have two loops on the hook. Now we're going to go over the stitch. That's going to be over this two lines. Yarn over and pull that through the two loops on the hook. The easiest way to do that is just scoop it like that. That's gonna create a single crochet. This pattern is gonna be made primarily with single crochets. So get, getting a hold of this stitch in general is gonna be really nice for this burb, but also for a lot of amigurumi. That is the main stitch you're gonna use in amigurumi. All right, we're gonna do three of these single crochets into this magic loop. So that was just the first one. Let's do another one. We're gonna go into the loop yarn over, pull that through, going over it, yarn over, and pull through the two loops on the hook. One, two. That's gonna be our second single crochet. One more into the same stitch, yarn over, pull it through, going over the stitch, yarn over, and pull through the two loops on the hook. See how I'm holding it very close to the where the other stitches are, that helps me get a little bit more of a grasp and doing that scoop really helps me get through those stitches. 
I want my stitches to be somewhat unified. So they're gonna be a little, like, I'm trying to keep them a little tight, um, but not too tight. That is definitely very important. Just try not to get too loose either. So that looks like a good consistency for my stitches. All right, so that's going to be the end of row one for the wings. Now we're gonna take this tail end and just pull it nice and tight, and it's just gonna close that loop up. Now we're gonna continue on to row two. For row two, we're going to turn our piece around and chain one. So we're gonna turn it like this so that the back of the stitches are facing you. And then we're going to chain, actually we're gonna chain two. So we're going to yarn over onto the hook and pull that through the loop that's on the hook right now. Pull it right through. Make sure you're not using this tail end, you're actually using the end that's attached to the ball. So that's gonna be one chain. We wanna do two of those chains. So we're gonna yarn over again and pull it through the loop on the hook again, again with the scoop. All right, so that's gonna be two chains, and uh, that's a good way to get started for row two. For row two, we're going to do two half double crochets into each of the three stitches that you made in row one. So first thing you wanna learn is where the stitches are. If you look at the top of the stitches, you see these Vs? See how there's like these Vs? Boop. Boop. When we work into stitches, we work under both of those Vs simultaneously. Sometimes I only work into the front or the back loop, and I'll show you when I do that. But for most stitches, you want to work under both of these at the same time. That's going to be into the stitch. So when I say work into the stitch, I mean under both of these loops. Unless I say otherwise, but for the majority of the pattern, it's worked under both of these loops. For the last three stitches, you can see the two chains where this loop is coming out of. These two Vs closest to you are the chain stitches. The three outside of that, one, two, three, all three of those are our stitches from row one. We want to work our stitches in row two into all three of these stitches from row one. We want to work two half double crochets into each one of these stitches. Let me show you what that means. We're going to take the yarn and loop it over the hook. That's called a yarn over. And then go into the next stitch. If you look at the side here, we're going to go right through here, and you can see how we're under two loops there. Once you're into the stitch, we're going to yarn over again, pull that loop through the stitch, and now you should have three loops on the hook. One, two, three. Now we're going to chain one, I mean yarn over, and pull it through all the loops at the same time. Again, the scoop really helps with that. One, two, three. Okay, so that's a half double crochet. For this round, we wanna put two of those into each one of these stitches. So let's do another half double crochet into the same stitch you just worked into. You can find that stitch by, see how it's kind of pulling that stitch open right there? If you follow it down, that is gonna be exactly where you want your, uh, your crochet hook. That's the stitch. So we're gonna yarn over and go into the same stitch you just worked into. It's gonna be right here. Make sure you're under two loops at the same time. You, kinda, you can kinda see how there's two right there. And then we're going to yarn over again and pull it through the stitch. And now you have your three loops on the hook. You want to yarn over and pull through all three of those at the same time. Again, the scoop really helps with that. All right, so that's two half double crochets into the same stitch. We want to do that for the uh, other two stitches as well. Let's do another one into the next stitch. So we're going to yarn over. The next stitch over is going to be right over here. You can kind of see how there, this was the gap from the first stitch. Next one's right over next to it. You can see the V at the top there. Like this, and like that. We'll yarn over again, pull it through that stitch, yarn over, and pull through all three loops at the same time. One, two, three. There's our half double crochet into the first stitch. Now we want to do two into each stitch, so let's do another one into that same stitch. Yarn over into the exact same stitch, yarn over and pull it through the stitch, Yarn over and pull through all three loops of the hook on the hook. One, two, three. All right. There's our fourth half double crochet. We did two into the last two stitches. Now we want one more into this next stitch. This next stitch can be kind of confusing where you're going to put your hook. Um, so just go slowly. We're going to yarn over. And you can kind of see right here, that's where you want to put it in to the stitch. But it can be hard to get it under both of these loops. You might end up just getting under that first loop you really wanna to try to get under both of them. See how I use my nail to help pry my hook into it? That really helps out a lot. 
So I'm into that stitch now. I'm gonna yarn over, pull it through the stitch, and then yarn over and pull through all three loops. One, two, three. And now we want one more into that same stitch. So we're gonna yarn over again, go into the exact same stitch right here, yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through all three loops on the hook. Okay, and that's gonna be the end of row two. You can see how the wing is kind of coming together. We only have one more row to do though, for the wing that is. Okay, so for this next row, we're going to turn and chain three. So we're going to, let, we can just start actually by chaining three. So we're just gonna chain three. One, two, three. See, so I just yarn over it and pull it through for that chain. Now, row two, or row three here, uh, the we want to continue doing the same pattern where we're chain three and then into the next stitch on the row That's going to be the first one's going to be right there. You can kind of see how it's a little darker That first stitch we want to do a slip stitch into it So we want to chain three one two three and then slip stitch into the next stitch So that's going to be right here go into that stitch for a slip stitch We yarn over pull it through the stitch and then through the stitch on the hook already like that that's gonna create this little bump. We're basically creating the wings right now, like the feathers. All right, so let's do that again. We wanna do that uh, three times in a row. So there's our first. Let's do another one. We wanna chain three. One, two, three. And then go into the next stitch. So this is the last stitch. Here's the next one. Make sure you're under both of those loops. Yarn over, pull it through the stitch, and then through the loop on the hook. There's our second one. Now we're gonna do one more. Chain three, one, two, through three. And into the next stitch, that was the last stitch. Here's the next one under both loops. Yarn over, pull it through, and then pull it through. There you go, we got three done. One, two, three of those wings. They're kind of hard to see, but they're there. You can see them better on the back. All right, the last thing you wanna do for this uh, last row is you wanna do a slip stitch into the last three stitches um, till the end of the row. So this was the last stitch you worked into. Let's go into this next one under both loops and do a slip stitch. So we yarn over, pull it through, and pull it through the hook, the loop on the hook. So there's one, then the next one right here, pull it through, pull it through. There's two, one more, into this last one. This last one, again, can be kind of hard to see. You wanna go under both of those loops. Yarn over, pull through, and pull through. Okay, the very last thing you wanna do for these wings is you want to chain one. So we're gonna yarn over and pull it through the loop, and then cut the yarn. You don't really need too long of an end. That's probably enough and then just pull it all the way through like this. Boop. And then it just makes a little knot at the end. When we sew this onto the body, um, we're gonna sew this onto the side of the body and you wanna use both of these two ends and you're gonna pull it into the body and then double knot them on the inside and it's gonna keep the wings in place. Uh, for this pattern, you wanna use, uh, we wanna make two of these wings. The wings actually both can be made the exact same way. That's not normal. Uh, some patterns I do it where I have a right wing and a left wing, but for this pattern to make it really easy, just make two of the exact same wings just like this. Okay, now uh, I'm gonna go make our second wing and then I'll come back and we'll make the tail. Okay, so for the tail, we're going to be using the same yarn. We're gonna start the exact same way. We're gonna make a magic loop. So we're gonna go ahead and hold it with our index and middle over our index like that, ba -doo, ba -doo, boom. Have the two, the X on the front, two parallel lines of the back, hold it in the two thing, like that, yeah, yeah, wow, wow, okay, great. <laughs> I already taught you how to do this. So um, you can always jump back in the pattern. Okay. All right, so we got our magic loop made. Now for the tail, we're gonna be doing a variety of weird stitches. You just learned the single crochet, the half double crochet, and the slip stitch. We're gonna be including the double crochet and the triple crochet in the tail. But don't worry, they're all basically variations of each other. It's it, just take it one stitch at a time. This tail is only made with like eight stitches total, so just take it really slow. 
Okay, we're gonna start by doing a single crochet into the magic loop. You started that way in the last row. Uh, so we're gonna go into the loop, yarn over, pull it through, and then going over the, the loop, yarn over and pull through two. Okay, so there's gonna be our first single crochet. I'm gonna pull my loop just a little tighter. Next, we're going to do a half double crochet. So we're gonna yarn over, go into the stitch, yarn over and pull it under, yarn over and pull through all three loops. One, two, three. Okay, so that's a half double crochet. Next, we're gonna do the double crochet, which is just a little bit taller than the half double crochet. I know it's a weird word, weird naming system, but that's the way it is. For a double crochet, we're going to yarn over, go into the stitch, yarn over and pull through, and then we're gonna go yarn over, and this time we're only gonna pull through two. Not all three like the half double crochet, just the first two loops. So that's one, two. And then we're going to yarn over again and pull through these last two loops. One, two. That's a double crochet. Next, we'll do a triple crochet. For a triple crochet, we yarn over twice. One, two. Then we go into the stitch and yarn over and pull that under the stitch. Now we yarn over and we pull through just two. One, two. Yarn over again and pull through another two. One, two. And then finally yarn over and pull through the last two. One, two. So this makes it a, uh, a slowly extending, see how the stitches are getting taller and taller? Okay, so next up we want to chain two. So we're going to yarn over and chain just two. One, two, and then we're gonna slip stitch into this magic loop. So we're gonna go into the magic loop, yarn over, pull it under the loop, and then through the loop on the hook for our slip stitch. Okay. So there is our first half of our wing done. Now we wanna chain three. So yarn over and pull through the loop. There's one, two, three. Now we're going to do all these stitches, but backwards. We're gonna start with the triple crochet, do the double, then the half double, then the single. So let's start with the triple crochet. Yarn over twice. One, two, go into the stitch, yarn over and pull it through. And now we're going to yarn over and pull through two. One, two, yarn over and pull through two. One, two, and then one more time, yarn over and pull through our last two, one and two. There we go. That's gonna be the triple crochet. Next, we'll do our double crochet. Yarn over once, into the stitch, yarn over and pull it under the stitch. Then yarn over and pull through just two. Two. Then yarn over again and pull through our last two. One and two. Okay. Next we'll do the half double crochet. We yarn over, go into the stitch, and yarn over and pull it through. Now you have three loops on the hook. We're going to yarn over and pull through all three loops. One, two, three. Okay. Last stitch, we're going to go into the stitch and do just a single crochet. Go into the stitch, yarn over, pull it under the stitch, going over the stitch, yarn over, and pull through two, one, and two. All right. Now all we have to do is pull this magic loop tight, and it'll tighten it up. Don't pull it too tight. You could break this tail, so be careful about that. And then we want to cut the yarn. You don't need a very long end. Uh, that's probably enough. And this time, you don't have to do a chain one or anything. You can actually just pull it all the way through the stitch like that. Okay, and now we're gonna sew, sew this onto the back of our um, our hummingbird body once we get there. Uh, we're gonna be using these two ends to sew it on. But isn't that kind of cute? It looks like a little heart. Yeah, it's really cute. I have a little heart pattern actually where you just actually chain one more and then slip stitch into that first stitch that you made and it actually makes it into a little heart. It's very cute. Um, I'll link it somewhere, I don't know. But <laughs> I have a heart pattern that's really cute and uh, you can make it bigger and bigger. Okay, okay. Next, uh, let's make the feet now, the feet of our burp. For the feet, we're going to be using our black yarn, 
but I found that using the black yarn in this tutorial is actually really, really hard to see. We're going to be using it for the other beak, um, but for video purposes, I'm going to be using gray yarn just so you can see the stitches a little bit easier. Um, I just think it'll make it our lives a little easier. So I'm going to use this gray yarn, but don't make it in gray. Make it in black. Okay, so we're going to start with a slip knot. For a slip knot, we're going to take the yarn and fold it over itself and then fold that loop, pinch it in the center right here, and fold that over itself like this. Now take the inside loop and pull it through and grab this tail end like that. Now you're going to create, this is called a slip knot. You can take your yarn or your hook, go into the slip knot and pull it tight on the crochet hook and it'll tighten on the hook, but if you pull this end, nothing's going to happen. Okay, so that is going to be how to make the slip knot, and that's going to be uh, what you want to start with for your black yarn. Uh, don't forget, you're using black yarn. Okay, <laughs> to do the feet, we're going to start by chaining three. So we're going to yarn over and pull it through the loop. I, I hold right at the base of the loop. And go one, yarn over again, and then I adjust my grip a little higher up. Two, yarn over again, three three chains. Next, we're going to pull it nice and tight. Pull it tight. That's going to create a little point at the end. We want to skip these two chains. You can see the ones that are pulled really tight here. One, two. Th skip those stitches, and we're going to work into the third chain right here. But you want to work into the back loop if you can. You don't really have to, but it does make it look a little bit cleaner if you can get into the back loop. If you look at your chains, there's a top loop, a bottom loop, and a back loop. Let me get my... Ah, I tangled myself. Okay, so if you look at the chains, you've got a top loop, that's going to be the one right here. Bottom loop, that's going to be the one right here. But you also have a back loop. If you look at the back of this right there, see that? There's the bottom, top bottom, there's the back. It kind of is a little spine. What you want to do is get your crochet hook into that back loop. So we're gonna find that back loop. The easiest way to do that is to actually either pry it open with your needle or use your nail to help you pry the uh, hook into the stitch. So we're gonna find that back loop, place your hook right over where that back loop is, and then use your nail to help you pry your hook into it. You don't have to do it into this back loop though. If you're having too much trouble with that, just use the top or the bottom loop, it doesn't matter. Just all of the stitches that we work are gonna be into that same stitch, so don't change it up halfway through. Okay, so we chained three, we pulled tight, we got into that back loop. Now we wanna do a slip stitch. So we're gonna yarn over and pull it through the loop and then through the loop on the hook, like that. That's gonna create a little tiny point. It's gonna be one of the toes. Okay, so now we want to do, uh, that was step one. For step two, we want to chain two. One, two. And then we want to pull it nice and tight and then slip stitch into the same place where you just slip stitched. You see how it's really open there? You see my finger through it? That's where we want to work into. So go right into that same stitch, yarn over, pull it through, and pull it through the loop on the hook. There's one, two. Now for... Step three, we basically want to do that step again. We want to chain two. One, two, and this is going to be the last step. We want to pull it nice and tight and slip stitch into that first, see me, see my finger through it, right here. Yarn over, pull it through the stitch, and then through the loop on the hook like that. It's going to create three little toes. One, two, three. Okay, finally for the feet, we want to yarn over and chain one one. We want to cut this yarn. You don't need to cut it very long. You can do it nice and short. That's probably just fine. My crochet hook fell out, but I'm just going to place it back in and then pull it all the way through. And that's going to create a little knot at the end. We can pull that tight and we can sew this onto the body uh, later on. You can see how it looks better. This is actually the back of the toes and I actually like the back of the toes more than the front. Um, what I also like to do before I sew it on is I always pinch the three toes a little bit to make them a little bit more pointed. Okay, so that is the foot. Uh, again, make sure to make this in black yarn. All right, now we can make uh, the beak. Uh, ooh, ooh, not just the regular beak though. We're gonna be making the burb beak. 
Okay, so for the bird beak, that's gonna be this beak that's under. Now, I will tell you how to make your head attached, like attached to the body, so you don't actually have to like make these two different pieces. You can just make one big piece and then sew the wings and the tail and the feet on. But uh, if you wanna make it with a burb head, you wanna make a little tiny burb beak. Uh, so that is what I'm gonna be showing you right now. We're also gonna be learning how to do a regular hummingbird beak later. Uh, but for now, we're gonna be making the burb beak. You don't have to make this if you're gonna make it attached, but I think it's way more fun to make it like this. That's just my personal opinion. Now, obviously we're gonna to wanna to make that in black yarn normally, but uh, like our feet, it's just kind of hard to see. So I'm gonna be using our gray yarn for the beak. And we're gonna start the exact same way that we started our feet. We're gonna make a slip knot like that, get our crochet hook in there and chain three. Yarn over, pull through one, two, and three. And then also like our feet, we wanna do work into our third chain from the hook and try to get into that back loop if you can. So we're gonna skip our first two chains, one, two, get into our third chain from the hook and in that third chain from the hook, we wanna do a half double crochet. So we yarn over, get our crochet hook into the third chain from the hook. That's gonna be right there, but I wanna work into the back. So I'm gonna kinda of turn it around a little bit and get my nail and get it into place. And then yarn over, pull through that back loop, yarn over again, and pull through all three loops on the hook. One, two, three, like that. Now all you have to do is chain one. So we yarn over, pull it through the loop on the hook and then cut the yarn. You don't need a very long end, just like the feet. And then just pull it all the way through like that. There we go. Now you have a little burb beak. Look how cute. We're gonna sew that onto the head later. Okay, now I'm gonna make one of these in black, uh, just like the feet. So make your burb beak in black, uh, but just like, it's just hard to see the stitches. Okay, when we come back, we can finally start working on the head of our burb. Okay, so next up, we are going to be making the head for our uh, burb. Now, specifically, we're making the actual head that goes on top of the burb body. That's I call this the burb body and this the head. Now, I will be talking about how to make them attached in this video. Uh, and I will also be talking about how to make it with a red... Uh, uh, chest for your hummingbird, but I'll also explain how not to do that. Obviously, you just don't do color changes, but I'll explain specifically what that means. But to get started, we're going to start with our main color of yarn, so our turquoisey kind of color here. And we're going to start with a, uh, a magic loop. So because we've already gone through how to do the magic loop a few times now, I'm just going to go ahead and get started. And we're going to get started with round one by doing six single crochets into the center of the magic loop. So when we did the wings, for example, we did three single crochets into the magic loop. This time we're going to do six into the center. Now for the head and the burb body, we're going to be working these completely in the round without turning around at all. So we're just going to keep going around in a spiral. So before we even get going here, you also want to get a little bit of spare yarn in a secondary color. So I'm going to use our gray yarn that we're using for the feet. I'm just going to cut a little bit off of that. And I'm just going to use this as a stitch marker when we get when we need it uh, so that we can keep track of where the ends of the rounds are. And that's just going to be a little bit helpful. Okay, so we're going to do six single crochets into the center of the magic loop. Now, again, we've already kind of done this, but let's go through it again. I'm going to close this magic loop just a little bit more. We're going to start by doing a single crochet into the stitch. So we're going to go into the center of the magic loop, yarn over, pull it under the magic loop, and then going over, yarn over again, and then pull through two. So again, we're gonna do six of those into this magic loop. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, now we are going to take our new stitch marker here to keep track of our ends. I'm just gonna put it right in the center of the magic loop fighting me doesn't want to go there oh really doesn't <laughs> there we go just right through the center like that and then now we can pull it nice and tight and it'll close around that yarn too 
Okay, so now we're gonna fold this new yarn or this stitch marker over like that. So that way it like has a direct mark of where the end of the round is. And then we're gonna take this tail end that we are uh, from where we pulled the magic loop tight. We're gonna place it over where we're gonna put our stitches for the next round so that we work around it just for a few stitches. And this will keep it locked into place so we don't have to worry about it accidentally opening up the center of the magic loop. That probably won't happen anyhow, but it's good to be, better be safe than sorry, you know? So that is gonna be the end of round one. For round two, we're going to be working an increase into each stitch all the way around. An increase just means two single crochets into the exact same stitch. So into the next stitch around is gonna be right here. We wanna make sure that we're working under both of the loops for our stitches around as we go. If you can't, if you're having a hard time finding which one is the first, uh, the next stitch in the round, you can actually count backwards. So if you count back from here, we go one, two, three, four, five, six. Since we did six single crochets in the first round, meaning that that's gonna be the first one. So we're gonna take our crochet hook and go under both of those loops at the same time. I see how I kind of wiggled it in there. That's because this first stitch is actually the hardest one to get into. Once we're into that first stitch, we're gonna place our tail end from the uh, start of our magic loop over our crochet hook, just like that. And then we're gonna yarn over, pull it through the stitch, and then go over the stitch, yarn over again, and pull through two. That's gonna be our first single crochet. We want to do two into every single stitch all the way around, so that's gonna be the first one. Let's do another single crochet into the same stitch. That's gonna be what an increase is. So we're gonna go into the exact same stitch. If you just follow where that V is under the crochet hook right here, right into there, that's gonna be the same stitch. So just going into the same exact stitch, yarn over, pull it through, and then going over it, yarn over, and pull through two. And that's gonna be two single crochets into the exact same stitch. Now we're wanting, we wanna do that for every single stitch around. So there's our first one. Let's go into our next stitch right here, just like that, under both loops, yarn over, pull through, and going over it, yarn over again, and pull through two. So there's our first single crochet of our second increase. Let's do another single crochet into the same stitch for our to finish up our second increase. That's gonna be our fourth stitch. So what we wanna get here is two increases into every stitch around, and because there are six stitches into our first round, we want to get up to 12 stitches. So that's gonna be two for each stitch. Now we worked around enough for this tail end. I think we can just have it hanging off to the side now, and uh, we don't have to worry about it coming undone. We could just keep working around and ignoring that tail end. And we'll do something with it in just a second, but. We just have a few more increases to go. That was our third increase. Here's our fourth. One and two. And then our next one right here. One and then to the same exact stitch will be two. Okay. Let's go into the very last stitch right here. This is gonna be the last increase in our 12th single crochet. Now we can take our tail end right here, we'll just place it, or I mean our stitch marker, fold it over, and we can continue on in the round. You should have 12 stitches around now, and again, if you wanna just count, count all the Vs around the edge, you should get to 12 stitches around. Okay, so now we're on to round three. For round three, we're going to do three single crochets, and then we'll do an increase. And then we're going to repeat that process of doing three single crochets and then an increase three times total. So let's do our first repeat of that. So that means we're going to do three single crochets. We're going to go into the first one right here. It's going to be right after our stitch marker that we folded over. And do a single crochet into that stitch. So there's one, then it, one into the next stitch right here. There's two. And then one more after that right here will be three. So that's gonna be three single crochets in a row. One, two, three. Now into the next stitch right here, we want to do an increase. So into the stitch, we're gonna do two single crochets. So there's one and into the same exact stitch, two. Okay, so there's our repeat. One, two, three, 
and then an increase. We want to do it three times total. So let's do that repeat again. This is going to be our second repeat. Three single crochets. There's one, two, and three, and then our increase right here. Four, and five. Okay, one more repeat. This is gonna be the last repeat. Three single crochets. One, two, three, and then our increase right here. Four and five into the exact same stitch. All right, so that's going to be the end of round three. And this is actually gonna be the end of our increasing for the head, so it's not gonna get any bigger than this. Now we can fold our stitch marker over and continue on to round four. And for rounds four and five, regardless of the head you're making, you're going to just do a single crochet into each stitch around. So that's going to be two rounds of just single crochets, one into each stitch around. You should have 15 stitches around at this point, by the way. So at the end of round three, you should have 15 stitches around. So every round after this, you should have 15 stitches around if you wanna keep count. Okay, so we're gonna do two rounds of just single crochets, just in our main color. After those two rounds, we're going to be doing color changes for the chest, uh, but that's going to be for the next four rounds. One, two, three, four rounds we're gonna do color changes. If you don't want to do color changes on the chest, and that is a high recommendation if you are brand new to uh, crocheting, just don't do color changes. It'll make your life a lot easier, but if you wanna give yourself a bit of a challenge, you already know how to crochet, um, then we will be doing color changes in the chest. But if you don't want to do them, we're going to be doing, uh, if you don't want to do them, you want to do five rows, five rounds of just single crochets in your main color. But I'm going to be doing the red chest, so I'm going to just do two in our main color. So we're going to do two rounds of just single crochets with our main color. So let's just go ahead and start working our stitches around. Like I said, they're just one single crochet per stitch. So I'm going a little bit quick now because it's not too crazy. You just do a single crochet in every stitch around. Try to make sure that you don't accidentally put an increase in any of the stitches. So you don't have to worry about like getting a uh, the wrong stitch count by the end of the round. Okay, and we're actually already almost done with our first round of single crochets. So round four is going to be done now. It's gonna be the end of round four. We're doing another round of just those single crochets. So I'm gonna pull my stitch marker up and we'll keep going around. And here's a good chance for me to say again, if you haven't yet, please like this video down below and subscribe to the channel. And if you really wanna help support our uh, this channel monetarily, consider a Club Crochet membership. They get you a whole bunch of stuff like early access to future patterns, access to my full library of tutorials. I add new ones every single month and we're at almost over 300 patterns now. Um, you can also get kits mailed to your door. It's really cool. I really, really suggest you check it out. Um, if you like this pattern, you, that means you probably will like a lot of my patterns. Uh, but yeah, please consider that. It, you can learn more at just clubcrochet.com. Okay, so that's going to be the end of round five in our two rounds of just single crochets. Uh, now, we are going to be doing our color changes. So here is the... Uh, the disclaimer again if you do not want to do color changes for your bird you want them we're going to be making it look like this but if you want to make the head just look regular with no color changes then we just want to do three more rounds of just single crochets no color changes okay if you do want to do color changes then get your red yarn prepared just grab it hold it to the side you're going to need it after doing two single crochets so we're going to start with doing just two single crochet stitches um, like I said, all of our stitches here are going to be single crochets and we want two rounds of just, or I mean, we're going to do three more rounds of just single crochets, but we're going to be doing color changes in between. Our first round, round six here, is going to be two single crochets and then four in red and then nine in our main color to get back to our uh, the end of the round. So let's start by just doing two in our main color. There's one. And for the second one, I'm going to get it started like that, but then I'm gonna stop. That's because we wanna get it ready to do our color changes. 
So now we're gonna grab our new color, red. I'm gonna place it right in between the two uh, loops on the hook and the one attached to the ball right here. We're gonna place it right over and in between and I'm gonna hold it down with my index finger of my dominant hand to keep it in place. We're just gonna hold it down like that and go like that. So now I'm holding it right over the two ends. Now with my index finger of my non-dominant hand, I'm gonna go in between the two colors like that and then I'm gonna flip it under like that. Not, I mean, obviously I couldn't even flip it the other way if I wanted to, but um, yeah, we only wanna flip it under like that. And now we wanna yarn over with the new color right here. We're gonna pull it through the stitch like that. And we're gonna pull our main color a little bit tighter. Okay, now we wanna take our main color and just hold it off to the side like so. We just wanna hold it off to the side with our index finger just for a few stitches. We're gonna do a thing called floating here. That's when you take your main color, you throw it to the side, you let it float, and then you do however many stitches you want in your secondary color, and then you pull the main color back over. It's a good way to do it so that you don't ever have to cut your main color yarn. So now we're going to do four stitches four single crochets in our secondary color. In the fourth single crochet with our secondary color, we're gonna get prepared with our main color and, color, and, and change back to our main color. So first let's do four stitches in our secondary color. So we want one, and they're all single crochets, two, there's three, and this one is going to be our fourth. Now I'm gonna hold it and keep it half color change just like that. We're gonna take our secondary, or our main color, float it over the two like that, and make sure there's a little bit of a gap in between. You don't want it to be pulled really tight or it might end up making your piece look a little weird, so give it a little bit of space, but hold it down with your index finger. So I'm giving it a little bit of space, holding it down with my index finger, then taking my non-dominant index finger, going between the two colors, and flip it under with the new color, yarn over, and pull it through the two loops on the hook. Now I'm gonna take our, our secondary color and we're gonna pull it just a little tighter to pull that stitch tight. And then we can actually just let it pull it off to the side like that. You can actually cut the main color if you want now. I mean the secondary color, so you can cut it pretty short. Um, you can actually cut it even shorter than that. So we can go like down to like, like there. Just be very careful. If you make any mistakes, you're just gonna have to do all those red stitches again uh, if you cut it too short. Okay, so now you want to do nine more single crochets in our main color. And that's it. You just wanna do nine single crochets in our main color. Color changes really aren't as hard as make, people make it seem. I do uh, have a video where I talk a lot about color changes. I actually have two videos. One where I explain how to do color changes, which you kinda don't really need to learn anymore now that I just showed you how. Uh, and then the other video I have explains them in detail. I'll link them in the description of this video. Okay, so that's gonna be the end of round six and our uh, first round of color changes. Now let's pull our stitch marker up like this and get our secondary color prepared. All right, so now for round seven, we wanna still just do two single crochets in our main color and then we're gonna to change to our red. Then we're going to do five single crochets in red change back to our main color, and then do eight single crochets in the main color. And that's gonna be our uh, round seven. So let's do two in our main color. One, two, like that. Make sure that this other strand from the last round isn't getting in the way, because you can kind of see how it was showing through that stitch. We wanna avoid that as much as possible. All right, so we're gonna grab our secondary color, Place it in between the two loops and the one attached to the ball. Take our index finger and flip it under. Yarn over with the new color and pull it through the two strands. Pull it tighter a little bit and then take our secondary color and just let it float off to the side. Now we're going to do five single crochets in our secondary color. One, two, three, four, and then get five started just like that. Take our float right here, and we're just gonna place it over the two 
le leave a little bit of a gap, take your index finger of your non-dominant hand and flip it under, yarn over, and pull it through the loops. And now we're back to our main color. And now we can take our scissors and cut the secondary color short. We'll come back to it in a bit. Okay, so now we just wanna do single crochets till the end of this round with our main color. That's going to be eight more single crochets in our main color. Okay, just a couple more stitches. All right, there we go. That's gonna be the end of round seven. You should still have 15 stitches around if you wanna count your stitches. Um, next, pull our stitch marker up and we'll continue on to round eight. For round eight, it's actually the exact same as round seven. So we're gonna do the exact same stitches, the exact same color changes. So again, now we're on round eight. We wanna do two single crochets in our main color. So we're gonna start with these ones. So there's one, Two, grab our secondary color, place it in between, and then flip it under. Yarn over and pull through. So you, see, you can see how as you get better at doing these color changes, it just kind of comes really quick. You can do it really fast and not have to worry too much about it. We're gonna place our main color to the side and we're gonna let it float and do our five single crochets in our secondary color. There's one, two, three, four, and there's our fifth single crochet. Change back over to our main color, pull through. See how I'm like, I'm making sure there's a little bit of a gap there, just so like it doesn't pull the stitches too tight. All right, now we wanna do, well, let's cut our main color yarn. Pull it off to the side. We'll need it one more time for the next round. Um, but for the rest of this round, that's just eight more single crochets in our main color to get to the end of the round. Okay. One, two, and here's our third. Okay. We'll pull our stitch marker up here, but we won't really need it too much. Before we go on to the next round, let's take this tail end here of the very beginning. That's from the very beginning of our piece. We're gonna place it into a needle and we're just gonna go straight through the top with it. So just like that, right through the top. And this is gonna create a little bitty tuft of hair at the top of the head and also get, it, get this yarn out of our way. And I'm just gonna cut it pretty short. We're gonna go like that short. And now we have just this little bitty tuft of hair on the top. And I like to press it down so that it splits the yarn a little bit. It makes it look really cute. Okay. So now we're on to round nine. I've pulled my stitch marker up here. For round nine, we're gonna be creating the frills along the edge, along the outside edge. We're gonna be creating these little frills along the outside. Now, obviously, if you're gonna be making it in your main color, you don't wanna do your color changes, then don't change colors here. But I am gonna be showing you how to change colors as you do this. The, the uh, pattern for the last row here is we're going to be doing a chain one and then slip stitch one working into the front loop only of the next stitch. And we're just gonna repeat that all the way around the whole piece. So. If you look at the top of your stitches, you'll see we've been working under both loops like that. For this row, you only wanna work into this front loop, only in this first one. And then the repeat is we chain one, so we yarn over, pull it through the loop, and then go into the front loop of the next stitch right here, yarn over again, pull it through that loop, and then pull it through the loop on the hook like that. Okay, so that's the repeat that we're gonna do all the way around. You want to do that 15 times total, but you only want to do two of them if you want to do your color changes. You only want to do two of them in your main color, and then you want to do six of them in your secondary color, and then another seven of them back in your main color. This part is kind of weird because this is like a really weird way to change colors uh, that I don't normally do, but it's the only way to make it work for uh, this frill part. So now we're going to do our color changes. 
we want to do two repeats of this main color. So we did our first one, chain one, slip stitch one. Let's do another one. We wanna chain one and then go into the next stitch. But this part, we wanna actually change the colors. So we wanna take our secondary color, take our secondary color, and we're gonna just create a loop. You can create a slip knot if you want, but we're just gonna do a loop like this. So see, I just looped it over. And I'm gonna yarn over onto the hook and hold that loop really tight and pull it through the loop or through the stitch and then through the loop on the hook like that. And we're gonna pull that other one tight. Okay, so now we've te technically changed over to our new color. We wanna make sure that we work over both of these ends as we work our next uh, six stitches using our secondary color. Now we can just keep, uh, keep continuing the pattern for six times in our secondary color. So we're gonna yarn over chain one in our secondary color. I'm gonna pull the first loop a little tighter to creep that, make that loop a little tighter and the same with this one and just keep going down. Now we're gonna go into the front loop of the next stitch right here, but we wanna place the two other colors over top of it as we work. So there's our slip stitch. And we're just gonna keep doing that. We wanna chain one and then slip stitch one into the next stitch right here. See how I'm working only in the front loop, but I have the two other ends hold over it. Like that. Okay. Go into the next stitch. Slip stitch, oh, I'm sorry, chain one. See, this is the trick. You wanna chain one so that the other two colors are in between the chain like that. Chain one, then into the next stitch right here front loop only, slip stitch one, like that. Okay, keep going, We're keeping these two tail ends nice and tight. Chain one, so we've done one, two, three. This is our fourth, front loop only, but the two tail ends are over it, slip stitch one. Pull these colors a little tighter, chain one, front loop only, right there, slip stitch one. Okay, last repeat in this secondary color, and then we can change back to our main color. Chain one, oops, chain one like that. Now we're gonna take our little tiny tail end here, I'm just gonna hold that over to the side like that, because we're gonna change now to back to our main color. Go into the next stitch, we're gonna yarn over it with this main color, pull it through, and then through the loop on the hook to change back over to our main color. Now we're gonna continue on in our main color. Make sure that we're gonna work around our secondary color to keep it locked into place. We're gonna chain one and keep going in our secondary color, or I mean our main color, slip stitch one. After you do just like one stitch with your main color, we can cut it. Um, I would leave it a little bit long like that, just so we have uh, a little bit left over so we can hide it into the end so that we definitely don't accidentally have it, you know, sticking out or like showing through the stitches too much. But now we can just keep going around with our main color. We want to do seven more times with this main color to get to the end of the row. There's one, and then we chain one, front loop only, slip stitch. Chain one. If you need any extra help for this row, I know it's kind of like a confusing round. If you need any extra help, uh, just let me know. Again, we have a Discord channel in a Facebook group, uh, and then there's also obviously the comments down below. But I'm happy to help. Okay, so now we are on our last stitch. You can see this is where our stitch marker is, so that means that this next one is actually our last stitch around. So we want to chain one, and then slip stitch into the next stitch right here. And now, regardless of if you wanna make your head attached to the body or not, we are going to cut the yarn like this, pull it through, and then we're gonna just hide these last two ends in and then cut this end a little bit shorter. So first, I'll just cut this end short. We don't need a very long end at all. Then this end and this end we wanna hide in. Let's start with our red end. The red end actually can be hidden in really, really easy. We just want to slip it onto our needle and then we can just like hide it into the backs of a few stitches 
on the inside like that. So I'll just do a couple right there. So I'm just taking my needle and hiding it into the backs of the stitches like that. And then I can cut it pretty close and that's good. That's hidden in just fine. Now this other end, we need to do something called a hidden end to hide this one in. For that, we're going to thread it onto our needle. We're gonna go into the back of the next stitch. That's gonna be right here, right, right above where that color changes. So right like that, go into the back of that stitch, pull it through. Now don't pull it too tight because we wanna know where this end is coming out. So you wanna find out where that end is coming out of and then take your needle and go right back into that and then into some of the backs of a few stitches like that. See, so I've just kind of like hidden it, hidden the needle all the way down. So then we wanna pull it somewhat tight. You wanna take it really slow here because we're kind of trying to mimic the look of the stitches so that you can't really tell where the end is. See, like that. You can hide it a little bit further in. Let's do that. Let's just go ahead and hide it a few stitches more up. It's not really that necessary, but it's nice. So we'll just go get our needle into the backs of just a couple more stitches like that. We're gonna thread this one ugh, onto the needle and then just pull it through. Okay, and then we can cut this one real short I, I'm not worried about this one coming undone. Okay. I'm just going to go ahead and stretch it out just a little bit. Just stretch our stitches just a bit. Okay. So that's going to be the end of uh, how to actually crochet the head. Now we just need to add the face, uh, meaning the eyes and the uh, beak. So let's start by adding the beak. For the beak, we're going to need our pipe cleaner, and we want to start by cutting our pipe cleaner in half. So I already actually have it folded in half like that. So I'm just going to cut it just like that. Okay, so we have it in half. Now we're going to take that half, and we're going to fold that half in half like this. Okay? Now this is where you want to find out how long you want this pipe cleaner. I do suggest using a black pipe cleaner if you can, but um, I don't have a black pipe cleaner, cleaner personally, and I think it's better to show you how this is actually gonna work if I use a colored pipe cleaner. So we're gonna use a colored pipe cleaner. Now I don't like making my, uh, my beaks too long, so I don't really want the full length of this pipe cleaner. I only really want it to be like a couple inches. What I actually do is I just measure See where my knuckle is? I measure like that. So I'll take my knuckle like this to see how long I'm gonna make it. The first thing we wanna do is we wanna take our nail, uh, needle and place it right into the end and create a loop around the thickest part of our needle, like so. That's, be, that's gonna be because we're gonna need to pull yarn through the end here, and so we need it big enough for our needle. So once you have it that big, hold it at the very tip and just start twisting it up as long as you want the beak to be. So we only want it to be that long. So I'll go a little bit longer. Yeah, that, I think that's pretty good. Let's do one more twist. All right, I think that's, yeah, that's pretty good. So now we wanna take these two ends and we wanna go directly into the center of the face. Now, if you have your color changers, this is actually pretty nice because it's very clear where you wanna put the beak ends. You wanna put them where the two, these two middle color changes are. So right here and right here is where these two ends are gonna go. Um, so that makes it kind of easy. If you're not using your, uh, if you didn't do color changes, specifically it's going to be row around uh, one, two, three, four, five, in, in between rounds five and six into stitches one, two, three, four and five. So in between rounds five and six and stitches four and five. But we have our color changes so that makes it a little easier. We're just gonna place one end of this pipe cleaner into one of those stitches and then the other one into the other one of those stitches like that. Okay. And then on the inside, we're just gonna pull them in as far as we can. And then we just wanna twist these so that it locks them into place. So we're just gonna twist it, 
twist it, twist it, twist it. That's probably enough. You can cut these a little short if you want, um, or you can just fold them straight up uh, into the head. Uh, let's just, uh, let's actually just fold them. So I'm just gonna make them into like a little circle, kind of, like this, so that they're less in the way, and just fold it straight up into the body, and then fold the nose straight up like that. There. So that way we don't even need to cut anything, but it's in there. Okay, so now we've got the pipe cleaner attached to the face, actually. So the next thing we wanna do is we wanna wrap it in black yarn. So we wanna grab some black yarn. You actually don't need that much. Um, I would go with like, let's go with like that much maybe. It's maybe like two or three feet. Maybe just like one or two feet. I don't know, it's not that long, but that's good. And then we're just gonna thread the end of this onto our needle and come in through the side, through one of the two places where that, uh, where the pipe cleaner's locked in. So just on one of the two sides of it. Keep track of which side you did pull it through though on. And then we're gonna pull it almost all the way through, just enough so we have something to double knot to. And then we'll just start wrapping it up the pipe cleaner. Now I suggest you wrap a couple extra times at the base and then start working your way up. And we wanna to try to cover up as much as we can of this pipe cleaner as we go up. We're gonna have another chance to wrap it up again as we go back down the, no uh, the beak. I wanna call it a nose so bad. Um, but this is your chance to like try to get as it evenly distributed, but also try to cover up as much as you can as you go. And I try to cover it really tight. See how I'm like making this pipe clean really tight? All right. Now as we get to the end here, there's gonna be that little loop at the end. We wanna take our needle and go straight through the loop like that. And this is gonna be how we're gonna cover the ed end of the pipe cleaner. So just keep wrapping around it. We just wanna make sure we cover all of the little fuzzies on the pipe cleaner as much as we can. See, so as I go, I'm just trying to like really make sure it's covered up. There we go. And then I pinch the end to make it more of a point. And then we're just gonna start wrapping our way back down the pipe cleaner. But as we work our way back down the pipe cleaner, this is your last chance to really cover it as much as possible and cover it as uniformly as possible. So I actually am twisting the body around the pipe, uh, around the yarn, instead of the yarn around the pipe cleaner at this point, because that way I can more uniformly twist my way down and try to make the yarn as, as nice and uniform as possible. It's not getting as clean as I wish it would, but it's not that bad. You still want to have some yarn texture. I mean, that's kind of the point of doing this. And as I get to the bottom here, I'm gonna go a few extra times around the base to create just a little bit extra oomph at the base of the beak, just because I think that just looks really cute. Okay, and I'm pulling it pretty tight as I get to the bottom here. All right, now I came out through this side. I remember I come out through that side, so I wanna come down through the other side, which is gonna be this one right here. See, so I'm going into that opposite stitch that you didn't work into. Like that, pull it pretty tight. That's a pretty good beak, I gotta say. I like that. Now we're gonna take these two ends, double knot them on the inside, just pull it really tight. So there's one and two, just like that. We can cut the yarn pretty short, about like that long is just about fine. And there we go. Now we have our beak added. And that looks pretty good. I'm, I'm pretty proud of that. The only thing we need to do now uh, before we continue onto the body is we need to, we can remove the stitch markers and add the eyes. Um, let's start by adding the eyes. 
I'm gonna use a uh, some six millimeter safety eyes like this. You can use bigger safety eyes if you'd like, uh, but I find six millimeter is perfect for uh, our worsted weight yarn. Uh, again, if you would like to get a bottle of eyes like this, I have them in available in our shop. Another great way to support the channel. Okay. The eyes are actually going to go right on the edges. Here you can see on the finished one, on the edges where the color changes are done. So you see, so you want them to be still in the turquoise part. So we're going to take the eye and we're going to do, it's two stitches away from each side of the, uh, of the, the beak. So one, two, it's going to be right there. And then on the other side, we'll go one, two, like that. And that should be good. Make sure to look at it head on. Look at it from the sides. Make sure that's where you want it to be. And then we'll take these tail or these like locking mechanisms here and you place them on the other side of the eye like that. And then you place it on it and lock it into place. If you wanna learn more about safety eyes, I actually have a whole video where I explain how safety eyes work and a bunch of different ways you can customize it. Um, you can check that out in the description as well. I go into a little bit more detail. All right, so there's the eyes added on and the beak added on. Now the last thing we wanna do for the head is we wanna get rid of these stitch markers and then um, I will show you how to attach, to make the body attached to the head if you want to, um, but I will not be doing the body attached to the head in this video. So first off, let's talk about how you would make that attached. So I'm gonna get this stitch marker almost entirely out. See, so I'm just got a little bit left and that's because I wanna keep track of where our first stitch is, which is gonna be this one. You wanna keep track of that. We're gonna be working, um, if you want to make the body attached to the head instead of making it your burb like this, you know, so that the head comes off. If you wanna make it so this head is attached to the body, it's really simple. All you need to do is get your new color, um, your white actually, I, I call this off-white because it's not really white. And you want to make a slip knot. Now, if you're not making your head attached, don't worry about this, okay? Don't worry about this if you're not making the head attached. But if you are, this is how you do it. Make a slip knot with your white yarn like this. Take your crochet hook and go into the back loop of that first stitch in, uh, in the round. So if you look right here, you see these... See these back loops right here? All these? This is what this is what you would work into for your stitches, as if they were all stitches. You want to pull through this first one. So take your crochet hook, go through that first one like that, yarn over with this loop, pull it a little tighter, and pull it through this back loop. Now chain one, like that, and we're going to do a round of stitches working into those back loops only, starting into the same one that you just chained into. So starting into this one, you're going to do what we do for the burr body in round uh, six, which is going to be four single crochets. So we would do one in the, this stitch, one single crochet, two, three, four single crochets, and then an increase into this stitch right here. And then you'd repeat that process three times total to go up from, uh, from 15 stitches up to 18 stitches, but that sounds really confusing. Um, what I suggest you do, if you do want to make the body attached, uh, skip now to round six on the body uh, where I will show you what to do in that round. But for this, for uh, our purposes, we're just going to say we do one, two, three, four, and then an increase, and then one, two, three, four, increase, one, two, three, four, increase right here and then that'll be the end of the round and then you'll continue on just like normal working into both loops of the white stitches but we're not making this this way we're making the body and the head detached because i like it more and i think it's really cute so i can pull this stitch marker completely out and say bada bing bada boom we got the head done all right so now we can continue working on the burb body we're going to be starting with our off-white yarn for the burp body. You want to start with your off-white yarn. So we're going to take our off-white yarn. We're going to start with a magic loop just like how we started the head. 
And actually round one is gonna also be the exact same as how we started the head. So for round one of the burb body, we're going to single crochet six times into the center of the magic loop. So six single crochets using our off white yarn into the center of the magic loop. There's three, four, five, and six. Now we're going to use the same stitch marker that I used for the head. I'm just gonna place it right in between, pull this tight to close the magic loop, and we're going to fold our stitch marker over like that. Ignore it completely and continue on to round two. Now don't forget we're gonna be working around our tail end for, for just a few stitches for round two just to keep it locked into place. But we're gonna do exactly what we did for round two for the burp, or for the head of our hummingbird. So for round two, we're gonna start by doing two single crochets into each stitch all the way around. We're gonna find our first stitch. That's going to be this one right here. We're working under both loops now, and we wanna do two single crochets in each stitch. So that means an increase into each stitch all the way around. So let's start with the first one right here under both loops. Make sure the tail end is, flip, is held over the hook. Yarn over, pull it through the stitch. Yarn over and pull through two. That's gonna be our first single crochet of our first increase. Let's do another single crochet into the exact same stitch. Like that, keeping our tail end held over our stitch and do another single crochet into that same stitch. There's gonna be our first increase. We want an increase into each stitch around. That's gonna bring us up from six to 12 stitches at the end of round two here. So we're gonna go into the next stitch right here for our second increase. Here's our first single crochet of our second increase. And here's the second single crochet of our second increase. Now we can take our tail end. We'll just fold it over to the side. We're gonna pull this through the center just like how we did on the head. Uh, to create a little tuft of hair a little later, but for the rest of this round, we don't need to work around it, and we can just do two single crochets into each stitch around. And this one, one, into the same stitch, two. And this next stitch, we've got one, and two, and then this is gonna be our last stitch right here. I can tell because my stitch marker is going to be just left of it. There's one and two. So that should be 12 stitches around. If you wanna count your stitches, just count those Vs around the edge. Pull our stitch marker up. Just like that, we are on to rounds three and four. For rounds three and four, that's two rounds total, we're just gonna do a single crochet into each stitch around. So just one single crochet into every stitch around, working around our stitch marker there. And we're just doing a single crochet into each stitch around. You should have 12 stitches for each round, for both rounds, three and four, should both have 12 stitches in them. Okay, and this is just giving us a little bit of height for the burb head. Okay. This will be nine and 10. Get a little bit more yarn. And then there's our 11th and 12th. That's the end of round three for me. Now I'm on to round four. We're just doing a single crochet into every stitch around here for round four. Three, four. Okay. If you have any other ideas for other burbs that you'd like me to uh, crochet in the future, let me know in the comments. I've been thinking hard about what burb to do next, and I'm strongly thinking a peacock right now. So let me know what kind of burb you would want me to see, uh, want to see crocheted. Maybe like a, a falcon. That'd be pretty cool. Okay, so we're at the end of round four. Now we can continue on to round five. We're gonna pull our stitch marker up like this. Get our yarn. 
Okay, so for round five, we're going to be doing three single crochets and then an increase repeated three times around to bring us up from 12 stitches up to 15 stitches. This is going to be the exact same as what you did for round three when we were making the head. Okay, so let's just do that though. We're gonna do this same repeat three times around. The repeat's gonna be single crochet three. There's one, two, three, and then an increase. Into this stitch, we wanna do two for an increase. There's four and five were both worked into the same stitch. So this repeat three times total. One, two, three, and then an increase. Let's do our second repeat. Three single crochets. There's one, two, three, and then an increase right here. Four and five. Okay, one more repeat. Three single crochets. One, two, three, and then our last increase right here, four and five. Okay, so you should have 15 stitches around now. Before I continue on to our next round, I'm gonna pull this tail end straight through the top of the head and cut it close, just so we don't have to deal with it, keep getting in our way, because we're gonna be doing color change pretty soon. So we're gonna pull it straight through the top like that, I'm gonna pull it pretty tight, and then I'm gonna do what we did with the head, cut it relatively short, poke it down like that, and just let it be a little tuft of hair at the top. Okay. All right, so we're gonna pull our stitch marker up here. Now we're on to round six. So this is the round that if you were making the head and the body attached to each other, you would be picking up right here. Um, so you'd be working into those back loops like I was saying before. But we aren't doing that, we're working into both loops. And for this round, we're going to be doing four single crochets and then an increase, repeated three times total, bringing our stitch count up from 15 up to 18 stitches. So that's gonna be, oops, just knocking things around here. That's gonna be four single crochets. So that's one, two, three, four, and then our increase after that. So into this stitch, we'll do two into the same stitch. There's one and two for our first increase. And we're gonna repeat that three times total. Four single crochets and then an increase. Let's do our second repeat. There's one, two, three, and four, and then our increase. Five and six. Okay, last repeat, four single crochets, one, two, three, four, and then our increase, five. Now for this last stitch, six, I'm going to, I'll pull it through all the way just so that we can say it's finished, but we're gonna undo that last stitch to change to our main color now. Okay, so that's gonna be the end of round six. Now we wanna change over to a main color. So I'm gonna pull that last stitch out like that so that there's only just two loops sticking out. We're gonna take our crochet hook and put it into those two loops. So we're basically like almost done with that single crochet. Okay, now we're going to take our main color, our teal color, and we're gonna place it in between the two loops on the hook and the one attached to the end of the yarn right there. We're going to take our index finger of our dominant hand and hold it, pinch it down like this to hold it into place. And then the index finger of our non-dominant hand is gonna be placed in between the two colors. And we're just gonna fold it under like that, yarn over and pull through with our new color just like that. So now we are back to our, our main color and we can take our stitch marker. I'm just gonna fold it over like that so that it's under these two strands of yarn too. So that way we can keep track of our ends of our rounds. Okay, so now we're on to round seven. And round seven is gonna be all in our main color. For our first stitch, we're just gonna work around this, uh, this first color just to keep it locked into the stitch. You don't really need to worry about that if you don't want to, um, but it's kind of nice. So we're just gonna go into the next stitch right here and do a single crochet with our main color. 
like that around our white. And then we'll just cut the white yarn short. And we're actually done with this white yarn, so we can pull it off and just toss it off to the side. Uh, we don't actually need it for the rest of this, uh, this pattern. Okay. Now with this main color um, for round seven, we want to do 11 single crochets in our main color, and then we'll do an increase, then two single crochets, and then another increase, and then two more single crochets, and a third final increase. That's going to bring us up from 18 stitches up to 21 stitches. Okay, let's do the first part though. We want 11 single crochets in a row. So we did our first one in our main color. So there's one, we want to do 11 of these. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, eleven single crochets in our main color. Now we want to do an increase after that. So here's our increase. There's one and two into the same stitch. 11 single crochets, and then one increase. Now we want to do two single crochets. There's one and two, and then another increase right here. Will be three and four. And then finally, two more single crochets and then another increase. So there's one and two. And then our final increase is gonna be right here. Three and four. Okay, and that's gonna be the end of round seven. You should now have 21 stitches around. If you wanna count all your teal stitches around, there should be 21. We're gonna take our tail end here, or our stitch marker and fold it over. And now we can continue on to round eight. For round eight, we're just gonna do a single crochet into every single stitch around. So just one single crochet into every stitch around. That's it, nice and easy. Uh, there should be 21 stitches around still. So just if you wanna count your stitches, you should have 21 by the end of this round. Okay. So now a lot of people probably are skipping this part of the, of the pattern. So this is where I always really like to do secret giveaways. So now is our super secret giveaway. If you want to win a free crochet kit, um, I'm going to give away a gift card so that you can purchase your own free crochet kit. I gotta slow down. All you have to do is you need to comment in the comments down below with an emoji of, hmm, what is a good emoji? That is very hummingbird-like. You know, that like, it would be like totally random to have in the comments, but you'd only know if you knew. Let's say it's a, um, a bee, a bee, because they're also like, you know, they're also pollinators or something. So let's do that. If you comment with an emoji of a bee, you'll be entered to win a give, gift card and I will choose a winner at random in a couple of weeks and I'll let them know by replying to the comment and reaching out to them personally. So comment down below with a B if you want to be entered into the giveaway. Okay, okay, back to pretending that didn't happen, okay? That never happened. We're coming to the end of the round, all right. Okay, that's gonna be 20 and 21, okay. That's gonna be the end of round eight. Okay, so now we have finished up round eight. Uh, from here on, it's gonna be invisible decreases, but before we even get to those invisible decreases, we want to add the face of our burp. Now, obviously, you can skip this part if you made the head attached to the body, but we didn't do that, so we're going to be attaching the burp head now, or adding the face of the burp head. We're gonna start by adding the beak. To add the beak, we're just gonna thread on one of these two ends, like this, and there's a very specific place that I like to put the beak. Um, specifically, it's going to be into round one, two, three, four, into this round, round four, and here's our increase in round four. We wanna put it around that increase. So I put my first part here. So that's gonna be round one, two, three, four, stitch number one, two, three, is where one half of the burb beak is gonna go like that, and then the other half is gonna go two stitches away. So one, two, right here. 
So there's one in between. We're going to thread this other end of our needle like that and place it through the, the stitches. Now we're going to pull through these stitches so that these little knots get pulled onto the inside of the body. So we're going to pull it just tight enough. Be careful, you can accidentally break your yarn if you're not, but see how that little knot gets popped through? We're going to do that with both sides. So there's one, and then here's the other one. Ooh, if I can. I'm going to pull it just enough. Be careful not to break our yarn. So that that, there it is, just barely poking on through. And we're going to double knot these two together. So there's one. And two. There we go. Now we can just cut it pretty close. And there is our burb beak sewn on. Next up, we want to add the eyes. So I'm going to be using six millimeter eyes again. So we want two of these and two little locking mechanisms. Oops. And the eyes go one stitch over from where the beak is sewn on. So we want one stitch over. So one right here, right? Is that right? No, no, one right here, I think. Yeah, one right there, and then one stitch over from this side. So one right here. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. Yeah, okay. Now we wanna take these locking mechanisms, just lock those beaks or those eyes into place on the inside. There's one, and then this side. We'll go two, and there we go. And now is when I say in the written instructions to pull the tuft through the top of the head, but we've already done that. Okay, so that's going to be attaching the burb face. Now we can continue on crocheting. Pull our stitch marker up like that. Okay. So now we're on to round nine. For round nine, we're going to do 11 single crochets, and then we're gonna do a stitch called the invisible decrease, which I'll teach you in a second. And then we'll do two more single crochets, another invisible decrease, two more single crochets, and then a third and final invisible decrease. And each one of those decreases takes us down one stitch. So because we're doing three and we had 21 stitches before, it's gonna bring us down from 21 down to 18 stitches. So by the end of this round, we'll have 18 instead of 21. So you can see how we're closing it in now. Okay, so we're gonna start this round with 11 single crochets to get to our first invisible decrease. And I'll work around our stitch marker. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. Okay. So now's our first invisible decrease. For an invisible decrease, we're going to be working into the front loops only of the next two stitches simultaneously. The best way I find to do that is you find your way into the first front loop only, like this. And then you get your crochet all the way around and you place it into the second front loop only. And we're gonna go into the stitches like that with our crochet hook. So we're gonna take our crochet hook, go up from the bottom and go straight up like that. There's our first front loop only and then flip your crochet hook back around, place it right into position, right into the next front loop only and then go straight up. Now, once you're into those two front loop onlys, you can yarn over and pull it through those two front loops. The easiest way to do that is really scoop it for this. So scoop like that, then yarn over and pull through two loops with a scoop, like that. That's an invisible decrease. It's a very hidden way to make it close in uh, subtly. We're gonna do another two of those and I'll show you that stitch again in just a second. But between that, uh, after doing that first invisible decrease, we want to work into both loops and do two more single crochets to get to the next invisible decrease. This is where you worked your last invisible decrease. So this right here is going to be where your next stitch is. Working into both loops. So go into both loops like that and do one single crochet and then to the next one right here, two single crochets. Now we'll do another invisible decrease. 
We're gonna go under the front loops only of these next two stitches. We go front loop only, flip your crochet hook around, front loop only again. Then we yarn over, pull through both of those loops. You wanna do that scoop to really make sure you're through both those loops. And then we yarn over again and pull through the last two loops to finish that invisible decrease. Okay, now we want to do our last two single crochets and then one last invisible decrease. So we do one single crochet into the next stitch and then two to the next stitch. And then our very last invisible decrease for this round, we go into the front loop, flip over, go into the next front loop like that. Then we yarn over and pull through two. I have a video tutorial where I go into detail about how those front or how invisible decreases work and different kinds of decreases if you want to learn more about decreasing and uh, you need a little bit more help with that. Okay, so that's going to be the end of round nine. You should now have 18 stitches around if you want to count your stitches. Okay, so we're going to pull our stitch marker up and continue on to round 10. For round 10, we're going to do one single crochet and then one invisible decrease and repeat that process all the way around. That's going to be six repeats total of that, and it's going to bring us down from 18 stitches down to 12. So it's going to almost completely close our piece in, and then we'll do one more round after this and then close it up. But after, uh, let's do this round first. <laughs> so that's going to be one single crochet into the next stitch. That's going to be right here. And then an invisible decrease. Front loop, front loop, and then single crochet. Repeated six times total. Let's do our second repeat. Single crochet one, invisible decrease one. Front loop, front loop, single crochet. There's our second repeat. Here's our third, single crochet one, invisible decrease, front loop, front loop, single crochet, single crochet one, invisible decrease one. Once you get into the groove, it really makes it a lot easier. Single crochet one, invisible decrease one. Okay, last repeat, one single crochet, and then one invisible decrease like that. Okay. Okay, we can pull our stitch marker out. And now we can sew um, our all of our pieces onto the burb body. So let's go ahead and grab all of those pieces. So I'm going to start by sewing on the wings. Get our feet separated too. We're gonna start by sewing on the wings and then we can move on to the tail. Now the wings have one end coming out through the front, one through the middle, um, and both wings are the same. So they're pretty easy to sew on. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is pull our stitch marker almost all the way out, just because we're gonna sew over the stitch marker. So we don't really need it there and it's gonna just get in our way. So I'm just gonna pull our stitch marker out now. Try not to mess up any stitches as I do so. That is the downside of doing stitch markers this way. It is a lot easier, but it can make your accidentally pull your stitches in a way you don't want to. Okay. I'm just gonna pull this last one out like that. Okay, we're, just, we're gonna leave this one just here like this so that we don't accidentally forget where the end of our round is, but now that the stitch marker is gone, we want to sew one wing on right here and then one wing on over here. For the wings, I like to sew this end first, this end first, and then the middle end. So let's start with the outside end. Thread it onto our needle. And then I just go a few stitches under the eye. So it's going to be like right here, right where the colors change um, in the middle. So we're going to go right here just under the eye. that with one of our ends and with the other end we're gonna go a couple stitches over and then down so you can either go actually right here is probably good like one away from where the color changes change that's gonna be a good way to hide this uh, color change too let's see how that works 
get all this yarn out of the way. It's confusing me. Okay. There we go. So we're thread this other end on the needle, pull it a couple stitches away, and let's see how this looks. Let's pull through there. We're gonna pull this other one tight and see how, if we like the look. If you really wanna make sure, grab the head, place our head on. Um, for the head, by the way, to place it on, you go under the burb beak like this, place it on over like that, and then you twist it. It's a lot easier to do when there's stuffing in there, so it'll be a lot easier later on, but this is a good way to make sure that your wings are where you want them to be. And I actually think that's pretty good. Okay. So we're gonna take these two ends and just double knot them on the inside. We wanna pull it tight enough so that it's really tight on the body, so it's not like a loose, like loose uh, floppy wing. You want it to be somewhat tight there. We'll just double knot these pretty tight too. One and two. Okay, so that's gonna be our first wing sewn on. Okay, that's pretty good. Now we'll do our next wing over on the opposite side. We'll start by threading out the outside wing first. We'll go a couple of stitches down from the eye, like right here. Get all these ends like that. And then the other one, we'll go a couple stitches over. We can do down again also, like that, to make the wing the same way as on the opposite side, or you can do the same round up. It's kind of more a matter of opinion on this next part, but let's make it go down so that it, the wings are the same on both sides. And see how that looks. Okay, obviously we want it facing down like that. There's one wing on that side and the one wing on that side. I like that, it's perfect. Okay, so we're gonna pull these tight and tie it really tight on the inside. One and two. Now we can cut this wing or the tail end nice and short. Place that to the side. And we'll do the same with this other end. Nice and short, like that. Okay. So there's our wings sewn on. Next up, we want to sew on the tail. And the tail obviously goes on the back. Let's get our stitch marker, I mean our loop out a little bit and out of the way. Okay, so the tail end, I like to do a different way. First, I like to, there's gonna be these two ends, one coming out of the middle and one coming out of slightly off the side. First, we thread the one in the middle, like this and you wanna go straight through the top of right here. That's gonna be a couple of stitches over. It's just gonna be right in the very back. And this is actually gonna be a decreased stitch. So if you're looking, it's gonna be this stitch right here. So right through this part. And then with this other tail end, we'll thread it onto our needle. And I like to go in through one stitch under right here and then over across like that. And pull it through, and then we'll go around this stitch on the opposite side of where the tail is. So that's where our tail end came from. We wanna go around the stitch on the opposite side of the tail, like this, back in through the same place where it's coming out. So right here, back through the same spot, and then out through where you started like that. So we're going back over to the other side. Like so, and pull everything nice and tight. Make sure to pull this tail end from the inside as well. And then the last thing we wanna do is we wanna go around this stitch on the opposite side of the tail, so just like that. So that's this right down here is where that tail end is actually coming out of, so we wanna go around this part around both loops there, back into the same stitch you started in, like that. And then we can just double knot these two on the inside. It's gonna be 
one and two, double knotted tight. And then we can cut the yarn relatively short, like that. Okay, that's gonna be our tail on, our tail sewn on. Then the last thing we wanna do is attach the feet. So the feet also come in two different parts. I really like to sew it on, it's kinda of hard to tell the difference, but this is, I like to make the bottom, and this I like to make the top of the feet. Um, again, it's kind of hard to tell the difference, uh, but yeah, here's what they look like next to each other. This is the bottom of the foot, and this is the top of the foot. Again, it's just really hard to tell. Okay, so I like to sew on one end into one stitch, and then one, and then the other end into the adjacent stitch. So once you have it threaded onto the end, I like to go through one stitch and then another one just under both of the wings. So I like to follow the wing down and go through a stitch right above the end of the round, so right there, pull through, and then through the next stitch over from that, like right here, I'll thread the other end on the needle and pull it through. And now I like to pull both of these ends tight enough so that the knots get pulled in on the inside, kind of like how we did on the burb beak. So if you look at the inside here, we want to pull it just tight enough. See how that knot is just getting pulled in like that. One and two. Double knot that on the inside. One. Two. And then cut that nice and close. And then we'll do the same with this other foot. Start Follow the, the wing down, right like here. And we're gonna do one end of the foot. And then one stitch over right here. Other end. Like that, nice and tight. We're gonna pull it just tight enough so that these knots get pulled on in the inside. One, two, and we're gonna buckle their shoe. Okay, double knotted. Cut it nice and close. All right. There are both the feet sewn on and the wings sewn on and the tail sewn on. And all we have to do now is uh, do our last decrease and then stuff it fully. Um, okay, so let's get our crochet hook in place. You might wanna stuff a little bit up now if you want to, but I'm gonna just stuff it all up in our last round. Okay, so for our last round, we want to do an invisible decrease in each stitch all the way around. That's going to be six invisible decreases total. Um, this stitch marker is kind of getting in our way, but I'll just go ahead and stuff it in to the piece right now. And we'll use it as stuffing later, but that way it's not in our way. Okay, so we're going to skip that stitch marker. Starting in this stitch, we want to do front loops only, front loop only, invisible decrease just like that into every stitch around. That's gonna be six invisible decreases total for our final round, round 11. That's so gonna be that, and then yarn over and pull through two. We're gonna do that for every stitch around. So there's our first one. Let's do our next one right here. Front loop, front loop, single crochet. And as it gets smaller here, it gets really hard to work into these stitches. I like to pinch it like this so that the stitches are flat like that to work into the stitches. So we go front loop like that. That's really hard to do, but front loop like that, yarn over, pull it through both those front loops, yarn over and pull through two. There's two, or I think that might be three. I'm not sure. Front loop, 
then the next front loop right here, and then a single crochet. Okay, front loop, then another one, and then a single crochet. All right, last two, they're really weird, kind of hard to see, but it's gonna be this stitch and this stitch. You can see where those Vs are. See these Vs? That's how I'm knowing where the single crochets are. And I'm going, I'm just looking up from above them to find the stitch above them, which is gonna be right here, but we only wanna work into the front loop, so just this one right here. So we'll go front loop, like that, then flip around, front loop. I know that last one's really hard, and then single crochet that. Now there should be six single crochets around. I'll show you how to count that in a second, but I'm just going to cut the yarn, pull it all the way through. Okay, the six single crochets, if you follow from where this end is getting pulled out, it's going to be right here. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. It's going to be right here like that. Okay. Now we can pull this stitch marker out like that, and I forgot we stuffed it with it, so it might make it a little tough, but that's okay. Now we want to stuff this piece full of stuffing. The easiest way to do that is uh, either with the back of a rubber crochet hook like this one, but this hole is pretty small, so what we want to do instead is use a uh, pencil. So we'll grab some stuffing and a little, uh, just a pencil. I find a pencil is the easiest way to do it. And then um, you can either use the end like this, or you can use the rubber end like this to go into the bottom, take the stuffing, and I just like to place it right over the bottom. And then I kind of like scoop it in like that. And the important thing is you really want to make sure that you get above the eyes with the stuffing. So try to get above those eyes. And we want to stuff it up enough so that it's not like becoming undone as you stuff it. Also, we want to cut this end and just hope that it hides it in there because I really shouldn't have done it that way that I did it. There we go. <laughs> That'll work. We'll just go ahead and stuff that little end in there. Okay. Let's get more stuffing. And we're just going to place it over it and use the eraser to help grip onto the stuffing as you stuff it closed. Okay. A little bit more stuffing, I think. Just a little tiny bit more. Okay, and then the last thing to do before we sew it closed is we wanna stuff it with a couple of our super strong mini magnets. I like to use three of these super strong neodymium mini magnets, and I just go straight into the bum like that, put them flat, just like that. And that'll just keep it so that he can perch on anything metal. Okay, so now I'm gonna thread this onto our needle and sew it closed. To sew closed, we're gonna take our needle and go into the front loops only of all these stitches and pull the yarn through. So we're gonna find our first front loop only. That's gonna be right here. And see how I'm only going in the front one? This would be under both. And this is only under the front loop. So we're gonna go through that first front loop and then into the next front loop right here. See, I'm holding it over with my non-dominant hand too, to help me get into that front loop only. We just keep going around, pull through the front loops only. Just a few more. Oopsies, I lost the... Oh golly. All right, let's try this again. There we go. Okay, one last one right here. Front loop only. 
There we go. Now we can just pull it really tight, hold it right at the base like this and pull it tight and it'll close up that bottom. And then take the end back into the center and come out through somewhere on the side. That's probably just fine. Like that. And pull it tight like so. And then we can just cut it nice and close. And there is our burb. Let's grab our little head. And again, how you attach the head onto the body is you take the bottom, you go right under the beak like that, and you fold it over the beak, and then you kind of twist it on. Now, one last thing that I like to do is I do like to stuff the head up just a little bit and just have it loose with some open stuffing in it. So I'm just gonna take just a little bit, and you don't really need to do this, but it does add just a little bit of like, um, stability, I guess, to the head. And I'm just gonna stuff it over the eyes as much as I can. That way it's got just a little bit of stuffing in the head. And then I take the end, I go under the bottom like that, and I twist it onto the head so that it's stuck on there. You really wanna twist it on like that. All right, and there we go. We have our little tiny hummingbird. I always like to tweak the wings a little bit, you know, make sure the tail looks good. But I think that looks pretty great. Now we can test out the magnet too. Because my scissors are perfect metal. Oopsies. There we go. He holds on. Great. Oh my gosh, he's so cute. I love this pattern. It's so cute. Okay. Let's get, let's get a good look at it from all the different directions. Thank you so, so much for crocheting this pattern along with me. If you like this video, please make sure to like and subscribe down below and check out more of my crocheted burb patterns. I have them all at clubcrochet.com slash burb. They are available with a Club Crochet membership as well. Memberships is a great way to help support this channel if you really like what's going on here and you wanna help support monetarily, I highly suggest a Club Crochet membership. Not only do you help support this channel, but you also get access to my full library of video tutorials and patterns. I have so many of them. I'm reaching towards 300 right now, and I add new ones every single week. You can even get monthly kits mailed to your door with all the materials you need to make whatever new kit we're adding that month. This month's Club Crochet Kit was actually for either a hummingbird or a turkey. So you could have chose in between uh, either one of them, and it came with all the magnets, the different kinds of yarn, uh, and everything that you need to crochet this pattern with me. We also do live crochet longs every single week, so make sure to subscribe down below, hit the little bell icon so you don't miss it when we do new live crochet longs. We're gonna have one for these hummingbirds uh, in just a couple of days, maybe a week or so, I'm not really sure, but I, if you make sure and subscribe and hit the little bell icon, you'll get notified for when we do those. Um, thank you so, so much again for crocheting this pattern along with me. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, if you want to, please share your finished work with me on Instagram, uh, TikTok, um, Facebook. They're all linked in the description. So make sure to follow us on all those different places and uh, share your work with me. I really, really, really like it when people share their work with me because it just it's so cool to see someone actually make something using a tutorial that I made. It really means a lot. So if you wanna share your pattern with me, I really do appreciate that a lot. Um, yeah, okay. Well, thank you again so much for watching and pasta la pizza, happy hooking, and I'll see you in the next video. All right, bye. You ever heard a hummingbird talk? They go, Nick.